Hello, my dear Fingsters, and welcome to another episode on Solidity Smart Contracts. Uh, this is the second part of uh, the topic special functions, and in this episode, in this article overview, we'll cover both the fallback function and we'll also show through examples, through real hands-on examples taken from the article, uh, how uh, the fallback function and also the previously discussed receive function work. So uh, our topics are first the example of the fallback function, then the example of the fallback function plus, plus receive function, and then we will take a look at fallback plus receive function call test. Uh, to begin with, first we have to define two contracts. The first contract will be contract called test. It will have a simple unsigned integer state variable called x. And it will also have a fallback function with external visibility. And this function will just assign, it will, this is a hard coded value, it will just assign value one to our state variable x. Uh, the second example with the fallback function plus receive function, uh, we will use this example by uh, declaring an entirely new contract, test payable. So let me back up for one uh, slide. This one was called test and this one is called test payable. We will use both of these in our, uh, in our uh, large example. Uh, why I'm saying this is because you can take all this code and paste it in the same file, regardless if you're working with a Remix ID or something else, you can paste all this code into one file and uh, by doing so you will have all the examples available at your fingertips because uh, you will just uh, refer to either one contract or another in the same code. Okay, so this contract test payable is uh, different in that it has two state variables, but it also has a fallback function and a receive function. They are both declared as external and payable. Why this payable is left out here, you can read about it in the article. This is because I wanted to provoke a very specific behavior, a very specific error in the contract. So I left uh, the payable keyword out of this example, but I also wanted to demonstrate a correct behavior. So that's why I put it here. So we have this uh, visibility, keyword external and we also have state mutability keyword payable for both of our functions and what we are doing is we are assigning a fixed value of one via a fallback function and a fixed hard-coded value of two to the same state variable via the receive function we are doing so to be able to differentiate whether one function what was executed or another function. So if uh, when you're uh, when you'll be going uh, through the examples on your own, you'll notice that you can call uh, that you have three calls available. I'll show you exactly which calls uh, what, what calls am I talking about. And when you execute one call and it triggers a fallback function, you will uh, be able to notice this uh, by, uh, by noticing one being assigned to X. And if a receive function was called, you will notice this by, uh, by noticing that the value two is assigned to X. So these two values are just used as, used as differentiators because we are actually through this example uh, aiming to learn what function gets uh, called in what case and also whatever is uh, given to the function as a parameter will be assigned dynamically through this uh, parameter message value. 
So these first two uh, values, actually the first value assigned to X is hard-coded one, and the second one is a dynamic one given via a parameter. Okay, so once again, we have two state variables, a fallback function and a receive function. And the contract is called test payable because this payable keyword right here. On the next slide, we are starting to construct our uh, testing contract. And uh, this is why I call this uh, slide fallback plus receive function call test. Okay, so the contract is called appropriately caller and uh, it contains two functions. The first one is used to call the function from the first, the simpler uh, contract called test. And the second one is uh, used to call, the second one is here on the next slide, is used to call uh, those two functions from the test payable contract. But let's first uh, get on with this one. What we have here is a function called test that takes uh, one parameter or one argument in, through one parameter called test. And this parameter test is of contract type test. So this test with a big T refers to our uh, contract test. Sorry, right, this one, okay. And uh, what happens is that uh, we are preparing ourselves to call this function. So what uh, this function, uh, let me actually just start with the call and then I'll get back to this part, bool success comma. Okay, so first of all, uh, to be able to call a low level call function, we have to cast this uh, parameter test to an address type. This is a must, so this is the first thing we do. And uh, after that, we can call the co low level call function. This is a usual way to do it. We will pass the ABI point encode with signature. And here we'll give a name of the function in the contract that we want to call. Uh, we have this non-existing function. We can actually put any string we want as long as it doesn't match any function in the uh, contract definition because we want to provoke a situation where uh, there is a call to a non-existing function. Okay, let me back up. You can see there is no other real function defined here except for the fallback function that will catch all the calls that uh, don't have a matching function. So this is what happens here. We will do a low level call to a non-existing function. And here we require that a success variable is set. This will be successful since we have a fallback function, it will be called when uh, the non-existing function can be found. And uh, what will happen is this hard-coded value one will be assigned to the state variable X of the contract test. Uh, I promise to uh, come back to this part. So we notice that uh, we have a tuple here. We have first a success variable as a bool type, then comma, and here we omitted the second parameters, the second variable, because we didn't need it. However, if we did, according to the specification, we would declare it right here, and then we would have the result of the low-level call available in this second variable. Uh, in this case, we are just interested in the success variable. So this is why we put it here. And uh, this is where we use it in the require function. Success will happen because this call ended up on the fallback function. And this part will get successfully executed.
Okay. The next thing we do is we cast the address. Uh, let me just remind myself. Aha, okay. We take uh, the parameter test. This is the one here. We cast it to address the same way we did it here, but now we are also casting it to a payable type because so far it's not payable and uh, we are doing so because we want to be able besides the low level call function we also want to be able to use the send function and from uh, this construct we actually make a payable address and assign it to an address payable variable called test payable so this is an object that we created and this is the matching variable type and we are actually assigning this object to this type and now when we say test payable dot send we are actually calling the send function on this test payable object and what we are doing is we are trying to send to ether however this attempt will fail because our fallback function that will try to reply to the on the other side to to the invocation of the send function because it's not marked as payable this is also discussed in the article and this is the first situation i wanted to provoke this is why i left the actually it would come here this is where i left out the payable keyword however if uh, if we put the payable keyword here uh, this part of the code would execute successfully so we had to do two things the first one is to cast this uh, address type to payable and then okay and we also assigned it uh, to a variable to a matching type variable test payable and then we were able to call the send function however i re i repeat this send function will fail because this fallback function will reply to it because there is still no receive function in this example the fallback function will try to reply to it but it will fail because it's missing the payable keyword okay now for the second a bit more complex but also a bit more uh, telling example is this one with call test payable so we'll, uh, with call test payable we will use this contract test payable as a source and destination for our function <clears throat> here we'll do three calls this is something i really want you to understand and uh, when you take all this code and play with it, I suggest that you first comment these second two functions and leave just the first one active and observe how it works. Then you comment the first one and the third one and uncomment the second one to enable uh, yourself to see what happens when the next one when the second one is executed and then when you observe what happens then you comment the first two and uncomment the third call and also observe what will happen then because i'm sorry uh, although they are similar they are not the same these three calls and uh, the main point is to get the gist of what happens when you call this one when you use this one or this one or this one but i'll uh, explain shortly what each of them does uh, we had to define this uh, success variable as bool only here and uh, later on we just use it as a container for our uh, low level call, call function uh, status 
certain to be certain that it executed successfully so first what will happen with this first example so the first example will call a non-existing function and uh, as such it would fail however this fallback function will reply to it i'm reminding you that uh, the receive function replies to a call only when there is no call data here we have a call data stated here in the parentheses of abi point encode with signature so both this and this example both uh, target the fallback function okay so the fallback function will reply to this non-existing function and what will happen uh, also take notice that we are not sending any value to uh, through this call so what will happen is the following the fallback function will get triggered it will assign this hard-coded value 1 to the state variable x but since we didn't send any <clears throat> any uh, value any dynamic value uh, through this uh, low level message call let me just remind myself yes it's call call and call all three of them are low level calls and uh, we use this uh, low level call to bypass that uh, 2300 uh, units of gas limit because this way we have no limit on what we're doing so uh, in this first case the fallback function will get triggered it will assign one to state variable x it will assign zero as a default value to to var state variable y because we didn't send anything and uh, this low level call will end with success this is what happens here what happens here is almost the same however this time we will also send a dynamic value of one when we say one without anything else this means one unit of way so this is the smallest uh, sub uh, sub denomination i believe is the word of uh, of ether okay <clears throat> so when uh, we do this call we are also calling uh, we are also using call data in the parentheses so what will happen is we will once again trigger the fallback function once again value one will be assigned to the x state variable however this time we also sent one away and uh, uh, number one will be assigned to the y state variable and finally uh, we are using our low level call once again this time we are sending to ether but the most importantly we are uh, omitting any call data so this time we are sending to ether and this time because there is no call data you already guess the receive function will get invoked and uh, it will assign this hard-coded value 2 to the state variable x and uh, it will also assign 2 and this is not uh, 2 this is 2 and 18 zeros i believe because uh, the default default value of uh, of a number is always expressed in units of way so since we sent to ether this is like we said two and many zeros of way and this is uh, the value that will be assigned to to uh, the state variable y okay i think i covered everything and i also aha this is an important thing to say i also covered uh, this case 
where I also put uh, the let me just check something okay the function definition ends here so this is a part of the contract color where I put uh, the receive external payable uh, function this is I believe something that is not even given in the in the example this is a, an example from the official solidity documentation however you need this we need this to be able to initialize this color contract with a, a certain amount of currency because when you're trying out these functions you will have to uh, to first initialize your main calling contract and ours is called caller with a certain amount of uh, currency and this is what i'll show you next this is not a part of the presentation uh, which you will be able to download but it will be a part of this uh, recorded article overview i'm sorry i tried to record uh, a live demonstration of this what i wanted to show you but uh, since I couldn't do it, I just uh, decided to take a few screenshots and explain what happens next. So the first thing is I took uh, the code I just showed you in the presentation from the article, or you can also take it from the presentation, but it's easier to take it from the article since it's all on one page. And I pasted it here in a Remix ID in one single file as i instructed you to do in the beginning okay and then after you press save you will have several contracts available you will also have uh, the color contract uh, the test contract and the test payable contract available for deployment so the first thing to do this is very important. I couldn't find it anywhere else, but I figured it out myself. Is this. First you select the color contract and deploy it uh, without any value given during the deployment. And when you do that, you will have uh, this contract listed here under deployed contracts. If you have more of them because uh, you did some uh, experiments, uh, clear them all because it will be easier to follow what happens. Okay, just ignore this uh, log window. This is uh, something from, uh, from one of my experiments. Okay, so uh, you will select the caller contract, deploy it with zero, and then you will find it here underneath in the list of deployed contracts. The next thing is you will open this deployed contract, put some value that you want to that you want to play with here in the main window value field, and I suggest that you choose ether because this this way you will all you will cover all these three cases on the right and when you do so here under the deployed contract under this specific contract you have this low level interactions section and without putting anything in it because we are now simulating the empty call data you will you will just press transact button the transact button and the note is that before doing so, you have a balance of zero ether. But when you press the transact button, suddenly your contract, your contract's balance will have 10 ether because this is the value that we designated to transfer from our uh, account to our contract. And after you do that, you can do that trick that I explained earlier. You can uh, comment the second and third example, and then just do the first one. 
here in the call test payable and uh, if uh, you're asking yourself how to know uh, what is the address of the, the test payable and test contracts it's easy you will also deploy them but with without any uh, value without any balance and when you deploy them the same as you uh, can see this uh, color contract deployed here you will also have for instance uh, deployed call test payable contract and then when you see it, uh, its name in a row like this you just press this copy button and then it will copy the address of uh, the call test payable con uh, i'm sorry not call test payable of the test payable contract and you will just paste it here in the callers call test payable field call it and it will work so don't worry about it and you will also do the same and each time you will have to redeploy the the caller contract if you decide to go that way and uh, comment each of these sections individually what would be it just occurred to me what would be even more practical is to create three functions like call test payable one call test payable two and call test payable three and put each of these examples uh, into one of them this way you wouldn't have to redeploy the caller contract but you would just get uh, two more buttons here and you would use the same uh, test payable contract address in all of these fields and of course if you want to play with the uh, test contract you would also deploy it and put its address in this field call test okay my dear thinksters this would be all for today's episode it's a bit longer than usual but uh, thank you for your attention i hope you managed to get something uh, interesting and valuable from this article overview i definitely recommend uh, read the article try out the examples and uh, i'm keeping my fingers crossed that you use, uh, that you learn something new and interesting thank you for your attention and until the next time take care bye